Pardon? Yes, yes, of course. Um, actually, I was born here, but uh, I have completed my education to four levels in Pakistan. I have a question regarding education. In Pakistan, even though it's a struggling country, they still give someone who is educated enough and talented enough the government the government do support their education. And I have been a friend with students who is going for, who are going to medical schools and they are like going for free. But here in the United States, we are afraid of going to medical schools because we don't want to end up with a four million debt at the top of our head once we graduate from there. I myself is a 4.0 GPA and uh, I am like, there's nothing like about perfection. But still, I'm afraid to go to med school. So. Because Would of the like changes of the Medicaid coverage and the money, yeah. they did that. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. sitting yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I am so <laughs> <sorry. laughs> First of all, how about a round of applause for this young lady who has a four point education? That's what you just buy in the store. You have to work really hard for that. Uh, so thank you. Luke. You're absolutely right. And yes, I was born here. I'm a daughter of immigrants. And over the years, I'll never forget when I was an undergraduate at NYU. I remember once you travel the world, it changes your perspective. And you see other countries, especially our friends in Europe and elsewhere around the world, they have a totally different system. And it feels like a slap in the face because they're going to school for free. Uh, everything is different there, from the emergency rooms, from health care. They just have a very different sense of what people are entitled to. I'm not going to stand up here and lie and say that we're anywhere near having free uh, college education. But what I can say is, um, especially for someone who's applying for medical school, and I don't want to say something that you've probably been told before, but that's where scholarships and financial aid will come in. And this is actually a good talk because this country is recognizing that we need more and more diversity. Our strength in this country is our diversity. And so we need to look for those opportunities where women are welcomed, where immigrants are welcome, and those opportunities are there. And in fact, I mean, that's not what APNA does here, but I can uh, talk to you offline because there are organizations that can help you um, if you're looking to apply in the near future. Almost I'm done with my bio honors and I have like financial aid covered to all of my undergrads. But the only thing like I am concerned being a student, like once you enter the graduate school, the, like especially when it comes to the students, the interest level, like it's 6%. And for parents and other people that take the home, it's 7%. So don't students like get a little more consideration when it's like about the students. And they are the one because when we know the fact that in the United States we are dealing a great deal of uh, shortage of physicians and medical profession, when we really need, like it is a country of young people and we need like I speak four languages myself so that's a great deal like we should like at least I, I'm not like in a hope like suddenly overnight uh, a change will come and we will have free education everywhere but at least what we can do we can like reduce the six percent interest to something especially when it comes to students. Um, I agree with you. I mean, those rates are <coughs> federally set, as you know. Um, but it doesn't mean that we just sort of fold our hands and say that there's nothing we could do. So I'm part of a lot of different caucuses in the assembly. We have uh, the Women's Legislative Caucus. We have the Black, Latino, Asian. We have a progressive caucus, which is underway. And I can tell you now, uh, I don't know if anyone else has mentioned it, but student loans is at the top of our list uh, because it's one of the number one things that people continually uh, reach out to us about. So I can actually just give you that buzz that behind the scenes, that's something that we're looking to see. But remember, we're state. Uh, but we are looking at it to see what we're able to do. Thank you so much. We have one more question for our assembly member. <coughs> assembly woman, can you give us some update? Is there any development uh, to in Al Albany to make some kind of legislation to issue driving license? to all New Yorkers, regardless of their immigration status? Uh, yes. I mean, the only thing I could say is that, that this past week, um, if you've been following, we had a really big lobby day <laughs> in Albany. So if you were following any of the footage, we had uh, hundreds and hundreds of people that descended uh, to the Capitol. 
And one of the lobby groups that was there was a, an advocacy group right here in New York City that I happen to know personally. I wasn't there on that Tuesday when they came, but I can tell you that the advocates here in New York City who would like for all New Yorkers to have a driver's license, regardless of their immigration status, they are pushing our hands um, in the New York State Legislature, and I can tell you that. A lot of times you can see a level of hesitancy. Um, you can see that people aren't quite ready to do certain things, but since I've been there, I can count on one hand a few certain issues that it's really the advocacy community that has really been pushing the hand, uh, not only of the speaker, of those of us in the assembly, and this is going to be one of those issues as well. All of these issues, we will have to debate them in what's called conference. Um, so we, we have our conference and we'll be debating it back and forth and the speaker will want to get a sense. There's 103 majority assembly members, so there's 150 assembly members, 103 of us are Democrat, um, and the speaker will get a sense of where everybody uh, stands on it. I can count myself among one of the people who has also come along based on the advocacy of groups like the Immigration Coalition. It's a little counterintuitive uh, because historically we've said, well, if someone is in the country and you know they're undocumented, wouldn't this put them in jeopardy? But if you really look where we've come along now in 2019, the thinking has really evolved. And what we're saying, number one, we're talking about you know decriminalizing uh, certain things, and we're basically having a conversation, whether we realize it or not, that we need to spend our time and energy on other things. Um, if you look at all the conversations that we're having now, whether it's about marijuana, whether it's about undocumented um, uh, individuals, we're basically saying, is this how we want to spend our time and energy? Um, and the answer is people are saying, no, it's just not that important. It's not a big deal. Um, and they'd rather not criminalize people uh, for not having a driver's license. So to answer your question, I can't say uh, if it's going to pass or not, but I can tell you we're in the middle of having those conversations right now. And probably soon, in a few weeks, we'll be voting on it. Okay, Marissa, want to say something? I was asked to say um, a few words about New Zealand, and at the risk of um, really people hearing me say this now for the third time, I've been attending so many events for the last few days uh, to show solidarity with our Muslim community. And in each of those events, I've been repeating the same thing. But I will say now what I've been saying in the last few days, which is that we are really witnessing a very dark and turbulent time right now in terms of the capacity for human beings to really show our worst selves. It's very painful. Um, it's something that defies you know, logic. And when I talk about New Zealand, I'm looking at the big picture. We have anti-Semitism. We have anti-black violence. Basically, in the last few months, we've had individuals who have walked into African-American churches because they wanted to kill blacks. We have people who have walked into synagogues because they wanted to kill Jews. And now we have people walking into a masjid uh, because they wanted to kill Muslims, which is just really um, outrageous. And one of the things that I've been saying is that a lot of this has to do with the way that we're cultivated here in the U.S. where we constantly have a us versus them mentality. Um, I think it's something that we have to work on because if you look at the manifesto, the racist thinking from this young man who carried out this evil deed, it's a lot of us versus them. And that's something we all have to work on. That comes in the home and how we're raised. A lot of us, just to be honest, you know, those blacks, those Muslims, those Jews, and we can't do that anymore. We have to get to the point where we say their kids are our kids, their parents are our parents, and we really have to get to a place where we all see each other as part of the human family. So my heart continues to grieve. I express my condolences not only to these victims, but just expressing solidarity with the Muslim community here. 
We have one last question. I'm representing right now Muslim mothers. I'm a mother of four kids. And my two kids attend New York City public schools. The question from all our, our mothers is that, because of the recent incident, what happened, we are very scared in terms of safety of our kids in schools. Unfortunately, in the elementary schools, I'm a witness, I'm dropping my kids every day and taking them back. There is a safety officer outside the school building. There is one safety officer inside at the reception of the school. But whenever the parents are going for workshops, for PTA meetings, for discussions with the school of teachers and staff, the, the security guard only takes our ID card at the reception. We do our intake, sign in, and get inside. But there is no extra security measures what we are taking inside our bags, what we are taking inside with our hands. God forbid, God forbid, if any woman or a man or a kid who is so extremist, extremist and who has hate within it and do something wrong, we would be, unfortunately, we, would, we don't want anything like, because all kids are equal, no matter Muslim or Jewish or Christian or Hindu or Latino or Black. But I would really want, we as a mothers, we really want our uh, state legislators to please look into this perspective. You are here, Assemblyman, uh, Councilman Mark Trigger is the chair of the Education Committee. So we really want you guys to do something for the elementary school kids. I don't want to talk about the middle school or high schools because I've heard there is some security, extra security for the middle school and high school. We are more concerned about the safety of the elementary school kids. I'm going to ask um, the council member to say a few words as well, but for me, uh, now that you're bringing this to my attention, we can call the Department of Ed tomorrow um, and the mayor's office mm -hmm. to share that this was raised, because I'm sure you're not the only one. Yes, um, it's, it's the advice of all the mothers, because all my mothers are telling me that you have to speak up and we need something. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you very much to my colleague, the member Frontis, and thank you uh, for raising this very important issue. So, uh, just to be clear, NY the school safety agents are not assigned by the DOE; they're assigned by the NYPD. Uh, so they're they're not governed by the DOE. Uh, every public school, elementary, middle, or high school, does have school safety agents. Uh, if there's a particular school that you have a question about or an issue about, please let me know the name of the school, and we can call both the NYPD and the DOE together to find out what's happening. But let me just also add to this. Um, there is no question that safety and security in our schools, or actually I refer to it as school climate, is a very, very important issue. As I mentioned before, every school, every public school in New York City has a school safety agent. Every public school has what's called a liaison from the local precincts that could be called upon if, heaven forbid, something uh, does occur. But if you ask my honest opinion about the long-term enduring answer to any potential safety issues in our schools, is there is a desperate need, a desperate need for more bilingual counselors and social workers in our schools to better meet the needs of our student populations. Because I don't want to live in a society where you have to go to school and every single day you have to be scanned to see if you, God forbid, have something on you. Because then we have to then go to the park and you have to be then scanned to see if everything on you. Then you have to go to a movie theater and then have to be scanned. Is this the type of society and community that we kind of want to move towards, and, and I'm not sure if I want to live in that type of society. We should live in safety, and we should live free from fear, but I think that there are more effective, enduring ways of dealing with this. But having said that, uh, we definitely need to make sure that this school, particularly that you're raising, uh, does have a certain safety protocol in place. Again, every school should have safety agents, and they should have a liaison from the local precinct to, to ensure that there's safety. But I'd also be curious to know, just so you know, Assembly Member, in New York State, elementary schools are not even mandated to have guidance counselors. They're not. So if they do have one, it's because they choose to invest in one. In high schools, it's mandated. And so this is one of the stuff that we're trying to push for in, in the city, 
Although, again, uh, the, the education is a creature of the state, and we always have to kind of defer to our state friends. And I do want to, by the way, just publicly say, I want to thank the assembly majority, which is the <coughs> Democratic Party of the assembly, and the current Senate majority for being very, very supportive of public schools, more than we've ever seen historically. Uh, so yes, I, I do want to publicly say that, and thank you. Uh, but I'd like to follow up with you on the school that you take any question initially. So you will mention how much uh, you and your colleague and our assembly district uh, representative were involved in the budget because we also been confused when we've been informed that our budget is no money in the city and it's going to be so many programs that have been opened a few years ago that our government, you know, our uh, pilot uh, all the people who are looking over the budget were planning to cut off and I would like to say thank you from all of us not only for the who is representing healthcare uh, field from the patient uh, from the regular people from the community for your support because we could see the result the budget was overseas and we hope by April 1st we're going to have a good news that it is investment, it is more money for the field that we're really looking for. Thank you so much. Thank you, Larissa, for your input. I would now like to recognize our Imam Sharif al Islam from our main mosque on Brighton 7th Street. He was kind enough to come over here and he wanted to express a few words of solidarity. Before, before I move forward, um, I would like to just say a few words. Um, if we can all stand up together and observe a moment of silence for the victims of the news in the tragedy. what has happened in the recent uh, incident in New Zealand. And it is a great pleasure for the elected officials and all the people who are here to show solidarity with the event that has happened. Uh, the Muslim community obviously is outraged by the events what took place. They were horrific, like you would describe, Mark. There's no other words to say anything about it. It is also gratifying to note that the outpouring of support and uh, sympathy that we receive internationally as well as throughout the United States is very heartwarming to see that the community is standing together. It's the community is standing together and they are basically in sympathy, they are expressing their, their loss, their support to just how as so what has happened. Obviously, this outpouring of sympathy and support gives us tremendous <coughs> comfort that things are not that bad, things can change, and there is hope. And our, our objective really is to create love that can only thing that can counter hate. It is, there is no other way. We have recently seen the manifesto of this individual <coughs> who perpetrated this crime. It was a crime against <coughs> The, not only the Muslims, but the Jews and the black people. So obviously this is something that is going on and there has been an increase in all these hate crimes and we have to counter this thing by not only making sure that within our communities we do not have any such element who starts this process of talking about any, any individual or any community or, or saying anything that is obviously hateful or in some way or the other disrespectful to each other. So I uh, am glad that uh, this is the only way we can uh, decrease this uh, kind of uh, element that is going on. And uh, it's a sad occasion but also gratifying in the sense that we had the support. So I'd now like to introduce our Imam. He is uh, the Imam of Amalji the Brighton 7th Street, our leader in the community. and. Uh, and he would like to say a few words to express the solidarity and also to express the hope that we move forward. 
I like to greet everybody by the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I like to thank our God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gathered us. Our faith is different. Our language is almost different. But we came in one thing. We are human beings. And as a human being, we have to respect each other. Every religion teaches us. Every religion teaches us we have to respect each other. And if something happens, we have to feel it's happened to me. If any human being he hurted by someone, we have to feel that if he hurt my son, my heart, my kids. So in New Zealand, it happened. Maybe some father they went to pray, they never come back. Maybe some kids they went to for pray, they never come back. So it is very hard to be patient. But God said, whenever this thing happen, we should be patient. We should. Uh, feel sympathy each other. We should make dua. We should pray for each other. So, as a Muslim, uh, we have to be patient now, and we have to pray for each other. And other other religion people also, we like to thank them. They are expressing solidarity with us, especially in New York City. And they put uh, NYPD. They put uh, 24 hours the police officer in front of the mosque. So. <coughs> Everything is now is good, but God, God forbidden. We have to be prepared for everything. We have to be careful. And we have to, if we see something, we, have, we should share for each other. We should contact, I know, whatever, you know, NYPD or uh, other agency they have. We should, uh, we have, we have to contact with them. And, <coughs> and last thing, uh, we like to thank our professor, mashallah, he is doing very good in our community. He is trying to gather all community together. Our boys is the same. Uh, we like to be together and we like to make one community, one sound in our community. So, inshallah, uh, everything going the right way, inshallah. So, I like to thank every, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for kind words. Uh, we're going to move on to the next agenda, and I'm going to hand it over to Arab. Thank you, everybody, uh, for joining us. Uh, when I was thinking about what should I speak about the incident which happened in New Zealand, I was thinking putting my words together was not able to find out something because everybody already spoke about what happened and showed their solidarity. So I was just Googling. And I came to know very good, uh, it was an iconic speech by Charlie Chaplin. I'm not sure it was, uh, he delivered that speech uh, many years ago, but it is still so relevant in 21st century. So I'm going to repeat his word as he spoke at that time. And you will figure it out why I have chosen this speech. It's a speech, a message to humanity by Charlie Chaplin. It says, I'm sorry, but I don't want to be an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible, whether it's Jew, whether it's a black man, white man, Muslim, non-Muslim, from anywhere. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and hate each other. In this world there is room for everyone and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls. The word, the word with hate. There is blood everywhere, there is misery everywhere. We have developed speed but we have shut ourselves in. We have developed the machinery, the technology, but humanity is somewhere lost. Let us unite. I'm not repeating the whole speech, it's too long. Those who are interested that can check back again. The ending part, it says, let us unite. 
Let us fight for a new world, a decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and an old age a security. In the name of de uh, democracy, let us unite. We just need unity. We just need humanity. We just need a peaceful world, a peaceful place for every human being on this earth. And being a mother, being a Muslim woman, being a Muslim mother, I would just want to say one thing that being a mother, it is our responsibility since the very young age, when the child has not started learning or speaking anything, we are, the parent, the guardians, are the role model for them. We are the one who put in their heads who is who, who is Muslim, who is Jew, who is Russian, who is a black man or who is a white man. The kids are all equal. This is our responsibility to go do the upbringing of our kids and tell them the lesson of humanity. Islam is a religion of peace. The word Islam means peace. Islam is a religion of respect. Islam is a religion of humanity. Islam is a religion of respect, love and care. There is a saying by our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that if you are crossing a street and there is something on the road and you have a, fear, you, you have a feeling that it might hurt somebody, Please take it away. It is a big gesture. So this is the religion of Islam it teaches us. So me and I request all of you, those who are here today, to please, if we, almost 100 people are here in this hall right now, if we all commit today that from today onwards, we will not tell our kids, this is this person, this is that person. We all are human. We all have to love, respect, and care for everybody. If we have chosen United States as a country to live, then we have to embrace all cultures. We have to embrace all people. We have to embrace all human beings as human beings. And we should stop feeding our kids, feeding our youth discriminatory things. Because the situation turns into worse scenario when they reach to the height of that extremism, Islamophobia, Islamophobia, racism, and they end up in doing that kind of acts, which we just, we all saw what happened in New Zealand. He was a child in the early 20s. He was 28 year old. That was a life to begin. That was a time for him to live and enjoy his life. And he killed himself. He did not kill himself. For the rest of the life, his whole family, whole neighborhood, whole friends, everybody will hate what he did and those were not the lives of only 50 Muslims, Muslim 50 humans, those who lost their lives. Those were more than hundreds of families, those who can never forgo, forget these things. So this is just a small request from my side that we should contribute as a human being. Thank you so much and I think uh, we have a uh, uh, judge uh, with us, uh, Gina Levy, and I would like to call her here to say a few words. Um, I have to say, I'm so happy to see everybody in this room, and your words were really inspiring and true, especially that we all live in this country together. We have to come together as a people, and there's no place for any hatred like what we saw in New Zealand, or what we see sometimes in the streets of our community. A couple of my we're, uh, we're one people, and um, I, 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 I had a lot of help from this community in being elected as judge. And when I was running for judge, there was no community. I was very welcomed by this community. I went to the center. I met people. Um, I connected with them on a human level. Um, and I'll just give you an example. One woman was telling me that um, she has a problem, that her apartment isn't in her name and her husband went back to the country and he married somebody else and things like that. I can empath empathize with these people because it's a human, it's human to human. And there's no room for any kind of hatred between religions, between races, between genders. Um, we're all one people. So definitely I can, uh, I, 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 these people touched me very much and I feel like I connected with them and there's definitely no room for such hatred like what we saw. And I'm just happy to be part of this community um, and part of this district, to live in this community with such a diverse 
group of people and to be part of the community and also to be welcomed with uh, such love in this community. We're all one people and I'm happy that I'm part of this community. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is our councilman Kyan. He's going to join us within a few minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> waiting. <laughs> so all my seniors, we are here. We are talking about this. 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 कि आप सब अपना कीमती वक्त निकाल के हम लोगों के लिए यहाँ पे आज आए हैं हमारे जितने इलेक्टेड ऑफिशियल्स भी यहाँ पे बैठे हुए हैं वो देख रहे हैं कि हमारी सारी कम्युनिटी यूनाइटेड है ये एक मोमेंट है दुख का हम सब के लिए लेकिन साथ साथ हम लोगों के लिए एक अपॉर्चुनिटी भी है कि अब भी हम अपने मुतहिद हो जाएं और एक साथ आ जाएं क्योंकि जब हम मुतहिद होते हैं तो हमारी आवाज ज्यादा अच्छे तरीके से सुनी जाती है सो so, बहुत बड़ा सानिया है पूरी मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी के लिए अराउंड द वर्ल्ड बस साथ साथ मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी के लिए एक आई ओपनर भी है कि अब हम यूनाइट हो जाएं और अब हम और ज्यादा अच्छे तरीके से चीजों को परसू करें ताकि हमारी नुमाइंदगी भी हो सके और साथ साथ हमारे हुकूक और हमारी जो नीड है उसके ऊपर भी गवर्नमेंट लेवल पे इनिशिएटिव्स कुछ लिए गए हैं और कुछ और ये लोग ले सकें अगर किसी का कोई सवाल है तो आप लोग सवाल पूछ सकते हैं किसी भी मौजूद से रिलेटेड अब तक की जो हमारी डिस्कशन हुई है उससे रिलेटेड अगर किसी का कोई सवाल है तो मुझे बताइए right from the civic, civic, uh, civic people, council men and women, uh, judge, for instance, I'm sitting next to him totally. So it's, it's a really wonderful group of people here. Uh, a question that I have is obviously, uh, you know, everybody's telling and obviously, uh, you know, a service is available to the, to the people living in this community, such as my mother. Uh, is there a single point of uh, information because everybody's come together today Sorry, Ahmed. Okay, but yeah. you know, in terms of, in terms of, obviously, in terms of signposting, for example, in events like what happened in New Zealand, you know, God forbid, uh, if anything happens like here, you know, where do, how can people quickly get that information at their fingertips, especially when you have multicultural society, multilingual as well? Is there kind of a central portal? Is there any central place where people can sort of go to and get the information right away? You know, uh, or you know, other than sort of coming face to face and dealing with or asking questions. Thank you. I can tell from our center's point of view. So, Apna Center is available 24/7 for your calls and for your in-person whatever questions and queries you have. We might not have exact resources or answer to answer your question, but we can connect you with the relevant resources, departments, and elected officials. So, Alhamdulillah, in past two years of APNA's uh, existence, we are able to establish contacts in every single office of New York City. So, we know which office can support you with respect to what kind of query you have. You can reach out to us. You can reach out to our Councilman Khaim's office as well when you have any kind of questions in case of emergency. He always says that whenever you call my office, a call is going to be picked up after two ring. So I remember that slogan. And it's not only by saying, it actually does. So their office is there. Then we have our council member, uh, Mark Trigger's office is here as well. We have a community board representation. So. People have those numbers available, those contact point persons available, the emails, the web websites, and the personal cell numbers of some of the officials are available. Our assembly, me assembly member, uh, Michal Funches, is here. Steven Simrovich was there before with us, and then controller's office, and we have a mayor's office representation. So this is the representation what APNA did in the last two years. So I personally think is a big, Achievement for APNA that we brought all the stakeholders of the city together under one roof. And these all officers 
whatever the services they are individually providing to the community. Afna is a central hub for the Brighton Beach community, for the Muslim community, for the Jewish community, for the Russian community, for other communities as well. So similarly, there are a couple of other programs which we did, tax preparation, affordable housing. So we are not expert in terms of that, but we can bring all those resources to our center and then the expert, qualified and trained and licensed people can help you out there. Community board, I already mentioned community board is always there whenever we invite them, whenever we ask them for any kind of help, any resources, anything, they are always there to help us. So your question, I think I answered. While we waiting for time to step up, uh, <laughs> <laughs> our time. Okay. Uh, Sama, like, um, so I we ha I had a busy morning and I had I also had a busy evening last night. There was a, an incident on Avenue H where a uh, young girl came off the train and was kicked. She was wearing all Muslim garb and hijab and um, there were no words ex exchanged so it's still being investigated by the New York City Police Department so I've been on the phone uh, last evening, this morning, early in the morning and uh, I had a few other events so I apologize for coming late um, but I just wanted to uh, begin uh, by um, my condolences and uh, on behalf of uh, not only my constituents for um, on behalf of all the people of good faith, uh, on the 49 people that were slaughtered, um, 50, now 50. Um, to me, it's 49, 50, you know, and then you have the dozens of others that we're not talking about who are still in the hospital. Um, so the numbers keep on going up, and hopefully, um, with our prayers those that are still injured will recover and we also have to keep in mind the families of not only those who are injured but those uh, who are still grieving and it's not something that goes away overnight and it's not it's something that stays with not only the family members of those who got slaughtered but it stays with all of us and i remember when uh, the synagogue, there was an attack uh, where 11 people were killed. How the Muslim community came out very strong. And we stood united, we stood side by side. And unfortunately, we have to stay here now with the shoes on the other person and say, we stand with you. No one should have to choose between praying at home or praying at a, house, at a house of worship. You know, in this day and age, and what happened um, after that horrific incident in New Zealand, the authorities came out by saying our, our, our mosque is not safe, everyone should stay home. You cannot go to the mosque, close your doors. And that is the wrong message to send and that should not be the message to send to people. Stay home. A house of worship is a safe haven. And like I mentioned before, that if you go into a house of worship, you could keep your eyes closed. You shouldn't be turning your back of who may be behind you. It's a place that we should all be able to sit and pray. And that is the place where we cry our soul out the Almighty to help us, to heal us. And when a, a horrific uh, attack happens in a house of worship, that's what gets us all worried, and that is a straight out terrorist attack. It's not just a terrorist attack on a house of worship, but it causes panic, not only in New Zealand, but across the world. And that is totally unacceptable. And we must not just unite together and stand together and condone and it's very and, and condemn. It's very easy to condemn. I mean, who would not condemn such an act? When people come out saying, I condemn this act, 
what else are you going to do? You're going to condone it? You need to condemn it. Otherwise, you're not a human being. But we need to get together and educate. Educate our future generations. Because as we get older, they will be the ones that we can be relying on to stand up against hate, bigotry, anti-Semitism, and of course, terrorism. And that's what that was. So I could go on and on, but I just want to say that looking around this room, um, you see the diversity, and this is the make of what New York City is all about. This is what we all stand for. And Imam Sharif um, from uh, the local mosque, I can't tell you how many times we're in touch with each other, whether it's during the day or in the middle of the night. And the Imam knows that I sleep with my phone when the Imam calls me, that phone is picked up. And uh, we have this outstanding relationship here in Southern Brooklyn, which is truly an example and for the entire world, entire country uh, that we live in. So I just want to once again uh, send my prayers and my condolences to the family. And I stand united and we're fortunate to have outstanding elected officials uh, here in Southern Brooklyn that always stand together. And I see in the council, my colleague, Councilman Mark Trader, and uh, Assemblymember Matilda Francis, and so many others. So I just uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today and to show my support uh, on behalf of our district, on behalf of our city. And I just want to finally thank our police commissioner because when I received the phone call at 11.30 at night, uh, that evening, and I had a conversation with the police commissioner after midnight uh, to ensure that every single mosque in our city is covered the next morning. And he responded by saying, we're on this, and uh, we are fortunate to have the best, the best police department in the force uh, in, in the nation. And I see uh, some uh, our local uh, officials here today. So thank you very much. We stand with you, we stand with the NYPD, and uh, Hassan Malik and everyone. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words of support, and uh, I want to thank all of the representatives who were here for coming in and expressing the support and solidarity. It means a lot to our community, it means a lot to us as a whole. We are all in this together, and we have to fight bigotry anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, xenophobia, and all kinds of those cruel, ugly things. So I, I want to thank you. जितने भी हमारे मुसलमान जो भाई जिनके ऊपर अटैक किया गया, उन सब के लिए तीन दफा सूरा इखलास, एक दफा सूरत अल फातिहा की तिरावत करके उनको सवाब के साले सवाब करते हैं, उसके साथ ही दुआ करते हैं। अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह इन्हें शेहबाज़ बाकी بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله الحق الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله الحق الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله الحق الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين هذه الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات آمين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد 
یا رب العالمین یا حکم الحاکمین جو سورة الاخلاص کی اور سورة الفاتحہ کی تراوت کی ہے تمام اہل ایمان بہن بھائیوں نے اے اللہ اس کا عجر و ثواب ان شہداء کے ان شہداء کو عطا فرما اللہ ان کے درجات کو بلند فرما اللہ ان کو جنت الفردوس عطا فرما ان سب کے بہن بھائیوں کو ان کے بیوی بچوں کو ان کے والدین کو تمام لوحیقین کو وہ صبر جمیل عطا فرما یا اللہ پوری دنیا میں امن پیدا فرما اسلام کا غلبہ فرما ہم یہاں رہ رہے ہیں ہم سب کو بھی آپس میں یونٹی پیدا رکھنے کی آپس میں محبت اور پیار اخلاص اور خلوص اتحاد رکھنے کی توفیق عطا فرما یا رب العالمین جو ہمارے بھائی پرویز صاحب نے اور ان کی پوری ٹیم نے یہ جو نیا ایک ماشاءاللہ اپنا یہ کھولا ہے یہ ماشاءاللہ اپنا کے نام سے اللہ تعالیٰ سے دعا ہے اللہ اس کو دن دگنی رات چگنی عظمت و ترقی عطا فرمائے ماشاءاللہ پرویز صاحب میرے بہت پیارے بھائی ہیں اور بہت خلوص والے انسان ہیں سب کے لئے ہم درتی رکھتے ہیں کوئی جانتا ہے نہیں جانتا جو بھی ان کے پاس کوئی آتا ہے اپنا دکھ درد لے کے اس کے ساتھ اپنے ان کے ساتھ شیئر کرتے ہیں اور اس کے ساتھ ہمیشہ بے لوس ہم دردی کرتے ہیں ان کی صحت کے لیے ان کی زندگی کے لیے دعا فرمائے اللہ ان کو لبی زندگی عطا فرمائے صحت و تندرستی عطا فرمائے ہماری بین شازیہ ہے ہمارے بائی شہباز ہیں بیت ہے بھی جو فارمیسی پہ ہوتے ہیں ان کی پوری ٹیم ہمیشہ سب ساتھیوں کی تمام پاکستانیوں کی تمام مسلمانوں کی جو ان سے ہو سکتا ہے جاز حلف کرتے ہیں مساجد کے ساتھ ساتھ بھی مدارس کے ساتھ بھی اللہ تعالیٰ اپنی بارکہ میں قبول فرمائے اور جو لوگوں نے ہمارے بہن بھائیوں کے اوپر جو اٹریک کیا ہے نیوزی لینڈ کے اندر ہم ان کی برپور مضمت کرتے ہیں اور جو لوگ گورمنٹ ہیں ان سے ریکویسٹ کرتے ہیں کہ ان کو دیکھا جائے اور ان کو سزا دی جائے اللہ تعالیٰ تمام مسلمانوں کا تمام انسانوں کا حامی و ناصر ہو سبحان ربی کا رب العزت اما یسفون و سلام علی المرسلین و الحمدللہ رب العالمین ناظرین میرے نام پرویز سے دیکھی ہے میں اپنا کمیونٹی سینٹر اور اپنا بروکلن ڈے کیر کا پریزیڈنٹ ہوں اور آج ہمارے ہاں جو یہ میٹنگ ہوئی تھی یہ سیوک میٹنگ تھی جو ہمارے لیجسلیٹرز وغیرہ تھے ان کو بلایا تھا لوگوں کو بات چیت کرانے میں ان کو بتانے کے لیے کیا سرویسز وہ آفر کرتے ہیں چونکہ نیوزیلینڈ کے واقعے کے ساتھ تھوڑے سے حالات چینج ہو گئے تھے اس لیے میں نے امام کو بھی بلایا تھا اور ان کے ساتھ سب مل کے جو ہے نا ایک متحدہ ایک ہم لوگوں نے فرنٹ ان کو بتایا کہ ہمارے مسلمانوں کے ساتھ کیا ہو رہا ہے اور بھرپور سپورٹ جو ہمیں مل رہی ہے اس کا سب سے بڑی خوشیز بات کی ہے کہ یہ واقعہ تو ظاہری بات ہے افسوسناک ہے اور اس کو آپ کوئی چینج نہیں کر سکتے لیکن یہ ہے کہ آئندہ واقعات ایسے جو ہے نا وہ ہم ان کو آوائیڈ کر سکتے ہیں اور ان کو پریونٹ کر سکتے ہیں چونکہ اب ہمیں آپ اتنی سپورٹ جو ہے نا باقی کمیونٹی سے مل رہی ہے یہودیوں سے بھی بلیک سے بھی دوسرے جو ہے ان سے بھی الیکٹر افیشلز وغیرہ سے بھی کافی سپورٹ مل رہی ہے تو آج ایک موقع یہ تھا کہ ہم سارے یونائٹڈ ہو کے برائٹن بیش کے کمیونٹی میں جتنے بھی مسلمان رہتے ہیں اور کونیار میں بھی جو تھے جو بھی وہاں سے بھی آئیں ہمارا مقصد یہی تھا کہ ان کے سامنے ایک یونائٹڈ فرنٹ پیش کیا جائے تاکہ ان کو پتہ ہو چاہیے ہم سارے یونائٹڈ ہیں اور انشاءاللہ اس قسم کی بھی کوئی چیز ہوگی اس کو نہ ہم ٹالریٹ کریں گے نہ ایکسپٹ کریں گے اور فائٹ کریں گے اور محبت سے ایڈوکیشن سے ان کو آگاہ کریں گے تاکہ ان کے ایٹیجوڈ جو غارہ ہیں وہ چینج ہو اور سب سے زیادہ ضروری ہے کہ ہم اپنے بچوں کو بھی ٹریننگ دیں تاکہ ان کی پرورش ایسی ہو کہ وہ دوسرے مذہب کے لوگوں کو بھی برداشت کر سکیں اور محبت سے پیش آئیں اور کسی کے ساتھ ذاتی نہیں ہونی چاہیے تو مسلم کا مقصد یہی ہے پیس اور ہمارا مشن بھی یہی ہے کہ ہم پیس فلی جو کام ہے وہی کریں بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم جیسا کہ تمام سب لوگوں کو تمام بہن بائیوں کو معلوم ہے کہ جو حادثہ نیوزی لینڈ کے اندر کیا گیا اور جس نے بھی یہ ظلم کیا مسلمانوں کے ساتھ ہم نیوزی لینڈ گورنمنٹ سے درخواست کرتے ہیں کہ ایسے لوگوں کو بے نقاب کیا جائے اور ان کو گرفتار کر کے ان کی جو سزا ہے قانون کے مطابق ان کو دی جائے اور اس کے ساتھ جو ہمارے اہل ایمان ہمارے بہن جو ہمارے بھائی ہمارے بزرگ ہمارے بچے 
مسجد کے اندر جن کو شہید کیا گیا ان کے لیے ہم ہم نے ابھی فاتح خانی بھی کی ہے قرآن خانی کی ہے ان کے لیے دعا کی ہے اور مزید ان کے لیے دعا گو ہیں اللہ ان ہمارے بھائیوں کے دراجات کو بلند فرمائے وہ تمام کے تمام شہید ہیں اور شہید کا ٹکانہ میرے رب نے اللہ اور اس کے رسول نے جنت بتلایا ہے اور ان کے لیے تمام اہل ایمان سے دعا کی درخواست ہے ان کے لیے دعا کریں اللہ ان کو جنت میں اعلیٰ مقام عطا فرمائے اور ان کے تمام بہن بھائیوں کو والدین کو بیوی بچوں کو عزیز و اقارب کو صبر جمیل عطا فرمائے تو اس کے ساتھ کاوش ٹی وی والے جو ہمارے بھائی ہیں یہ ہمیشہ جتنے بھی ایسے ایونٹ ہوتے ہیں جتنے بھی ایسے پروگرامز ہوتے ہیں ان کو ان کو پرموٹ کرتے ہیں ان کے ماشاء اللہ ہم ہر جگہ پہ پہنچتے ہیں اور یہاں پہ آج جو ہمارے بھائی پرویز صدیقی صاحب اپنا کے نام سے جو ڈے کیئر انہوں نے بنایا اللہ تعالیٰ اس کے لیے بھی ہم میں دعا گو ہوں اللہ تعالیٰ اس کو دن دگنی رات چگنی عظمت و ترقی عطا فرمائے اور پرویز صاحب کی زندگی صحت میں اللہ تعالیٰ برکت فرمائے جزاک اللہ خیر ان کثیر